You know, the devil is a liar. There's so many things he's throwing at us every day. But his mercy has kept you and I. Hallelujah. Can you just lift up your voice and also continue to thank God this morning? I want you to adore God. If you're happy and you've been blessed by the sections that has gone on, I want to say, Lord, thank you. Lord, I have come this morning to partake and to receive from your presence. I ask, oh Lord, that I don't go back the same way I came. I ask, oh Lord, that the blessings that have been released for today's service, oh Lord, I shall receive them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You know, this morning we're going to be speaking on a topic I titled, The Seasons of Change. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you ready to change your season? Yes. Ma'am. From unprofitable to profitable. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're ready to change your season, I want you to shout hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. You know, I, I, I just tell people that I meet that we all walk in seasons. There's so many people who don't, who don't even understand those seasons. If you read your Bible and you understand God, you understand that even Jesus walked with seasons. He understood different seasons and he kept telling his disciples that at this time, it will be this season. At this time, this is what we're expecting. I was talking to somebody and the person said, this thing has been happening. I said, but you should have overcome this season by this time. Why are you still dwelling in this season? Praise God. Why are you still dwelling in this season? Jesus obeyed the principles of season at all times. Like I told us. And he related these principles to his word, to his disciples. Hallelujah. Amen. We're just going to read the Bible in Ecclesiastes 1. I'm sorry, Ecclesiastes 3. We're going to be reading verses 1 to 8. To everything there's a season. And a time to every purpose under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which was planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak up. And a time to love and a time to hate. He had made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he had set the world in their hearts, so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning of the earth. Do you not understand what we're saying? That to everything under the heaven, the Bible said what? That is a season. When I talk to people, I tell them that nothing happens by mere occurrences at all. Nothing. If a child is born, he is born under a season. For some of us, you understand that the rain does, does not just fall outside its season. Hallelujah. There's a time where we call it the raining season. And there's a time we call the dry season. So everything you see does not happen under just a mere occurrence. Nothing happened by just mere occurrence. Hallelujah. And your reason of this ministration, that you shall come out of that programming in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. But eventually, the enemy has programmed something evil in your season. You shall come out of it in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. The Bible tells us the different season. There is a season to be this and there is a season to be that. The season to smile and the season to what? Hey. But some persons have been under a particular season and for a long time they've been unable to get out of it. And you know, I pity the Christians who say everything is God. It is the will of God. Not everything is the will of God. And I want to speak to you today. Not everything. Whatever Job went through was not the will of God. He was working under what? The programming of the enemy. When Lucifer saw that Job's life was perfect, he went to God and said, how can you make his life this perfect? And you say he fears and loves you. It is because of the things you have given to him. There are so many persons here. The enemy is constantly accusing God over your life. The season of pains that Job went over or went through was not the will of God. Though it was the permission the will of God was what Job was enjoying. So you need to understand in the house on whose programming am I walking on? 
We have a lot of weak Christians today who take everything out. This is God. No. The Bible has told us its will. That you should be in what? In good health and prosper. As your soul prospers. If there is any diversion to that, know that an enemy is involved. There's an accusation somewhere that is involved. Whose programming are you working on? On whose program are you working on today? Is it the programming of God for you? Or is it that of the enemy? The normal programming of God is that there is a time that the child should be born. And with the normal development, how God has programmed it, in this time the child can walk. In this time the child can achieve this in his life. In this time the child will grow a tooth. But when you see a child and the enemy has altered the program, you see the delays, you see the errors, the developmental issues. Today, whatever the enemy has programmed in your life will be uprooted. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. That season of delay, that programming of delay over your life today, it shall be uprooted. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You know, I have to understand this season because when I speak to people sometimes, you know, and they tell me, oh, this is what has been going on for a long time. And I ask, so what are you doing about it? Do you think this is the will of God? And they say, well, the Bible says everything is God. I said, no. What, how, from where and how are you understanding the Bible? The Christians understand their Bible some other way. Hallelujah. Amen. I refuse to be among those that understand the Bible the other way. Hallelujah. Amen. Today, the handwriting of God over your life shall prevail. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The handwriting of God over your life shall prevail. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to just talk about the keys to the manifestation of the seasons. Because that's not what we have to declare. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're preaching about the season and how your season can change, then we have to talk about the keys to the manifestation of those seasons. And one of the keys, because at the end of the day, I want us to live in the season of the Lord. So we don't miss our seasons in Jesus' name. Amen. One of those keys will be what your relationship to God and obedience to the word of God. You know, every time I tell us about keys, the first thing I bring is relationship with God and obedience to the word of God. Because it's one of the things that we Christians like to buy box. We just want to enjoy everything that God gives. But we don't want the relationship. Hallelujah. It's like telling somebody, give me your money, I don't need to love you. You want to rob the person. There's, a lot of people say, how can you, uh, is it rob Paul and pay Peter or something? So, to enjoy this season of change that is coming your way, this season that is taking you from the place of lack to the place of plenty, you have to understand the principles involved. And that is one, you have to have a good relationship with God. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. And you have to be, what, be obedient to the word of God. The Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 to 4. Can somebody quickly read Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy 8 verses 1 to 4? All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply, and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the ways which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness, to humble thee and to prove thee, to know what was in thy heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandment or no, or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of his mouth of the Lord doth man live. The raiment waxed not old upon thee, neither did the foot swell these forty years. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Bible here is trying to tell us that obedience guarantees your elevation in life. When you obey God, you attract what uncommon blessings. Sometimes the reason why a lot of people complain is because they have not done what the Bible is saying to. Obey the Lord thy God. You know, before you complain, do a check over yourself. You're always on the complaining side, but you've actually not checked yourself. Is everything okay with me? Am I doing what God said I should do? Am I obeying his commandments? Do I love God enough to demand the things I'm demanding from him? You cannot be far from someone and still want to receive things that people who are close to that person get. You have to understand those principles as children of God. You cannot be far from God 
and expect to benefit the things that the people who sacrifice a lot to be close to him get. Obey the Lord thy God today. Obedience guarantees what? Your uncommon blessing in the house. Hallelujah. Amen. The next key is to achieve a season of change will be what? Preparation. A lot of Christians don't prepare today. There is no way you can drive a jet by anointing. You must be prepared. There is no way you can drive a car by prayers. You must go to a driving school. You must learn how to drive. That is preparation. You cannot hit the road. You will have a lot of accidents and you will kill people. Preparations as children of God. How are you prepared? Sometimes your season was stolen because you were not prepared when the enemy attacked. Sometimes you lost the thing that God has given to you. The blessings, the glory, like our forefathers. Because they were not prepared when the enemy came and took them. And that is why the Bible in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 2 tells us that what? That our Lord will come like what? And see the night. He's trying to tell us that only those who are prepared. Hallelujah. If a thief wants to storm your house and you're not prepared, he will definitely rob and take whatever he, he has come to take. But before the robbery, if you are prepared, they will be unable to penetrate. I'm trying to tell us today, as children of God, that you need to be prepared in life as children of God. The most lazy people we see are actually the true are Christians and those that identify themselves as true Christians. Now, everybody says they are Christians, actually. You know, everybody has said, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. No, but the most lazy people are those ones that are truly children of God. Because they are the ones that are mostly, should I say, used or something in the, in the in this world that we live in. The people who don't even know God are doing so much that we, the children of God, where are we in the society, actually? How prepared are we as children of God? We're talking about season of change. We should not neglect these things. Hallelujah. The Bible told us that when Goliath was threatening the people of Israel, everybody was threatening, including the king. Why? Because they were not prepared to fight the giant like that. If the children of Israel was prepared, there was no way everybody would be running helter scatter to face Goliath. Hallelujah. They were all running. They were to the point that a whole king said, whoever can stand, because nobody could stand Goliath. A whole nation could not stand one man. And the king made a pronouncement and said, okay, if anybody can help me bring this man down, I shall give the person what half of my kingdom, they shall be taxed, they shall live tax free. I would even give them my daughter. <coughs> when you're not prepared, fear will live in you. Hallelujah. When you're not prepared, you will not have the, the temerity, the, 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 the pride to face certain situations in your life. The Bible said Israel was trembled by Goliath. And one man that has been prepared showed forth. That is David. You know one thing I love about David? He understood his abilities and he knew he was prepared and he was able to demand it is only when you are prepared for something you can give a tax or price tax to certain things. Hallelujah. If you are not prepared and you go to a job, you will lose the job first. But if you know your worth and you know that for years you've been in school or for years you've invested in this knowledge, you can tell them this is what I want you to pay me. It is not just by anointing. The Bible said David has been in the wilderness for years. For years David has been in the wilderness. Preparing, and when he came and saw the people threatening over one guy, go be. He was like, "What's going on? What is going on?" And they said, "You, this small guy, go back to the wilderness where you were." But he was prepared in the wilderness. They did not understand. What are you doing here? You've come to show yourself. Then he said, "What is going on?" They said, "We're threatened." And he said, "Okay, what shall be done to the man that will bring this person down?" That is what preparedness gives you. Hallelujah. Amen. It gives you the assurance. It gives you the opportunity the, the, you know, to demand for something. 
You place a price tag over your what? And they say, well, this is what the king has promised to. They were telling him because the family could not do anything. If you can bring this man down, we'll give you half of his kingdom. You will even get married to his daughter. And then he said, you will get married to his daughter. Okay, I'm going to do it. He went and met the king, so. And when Saul saw David, Saul was like, this, you know, this kind of, the way you believe to somebody politely, what is this guy saying? David said, I will bring down Goliath. Saul said, you, there's no, okay. How do you intend to do that? Do that? And based on his preparation, David boasted and said, look, in the wilderness I killed a lion and even a bear with my hands. When it came to steal what? My sheep. I tore it and I killed it with my hands. And then so like, okay, if a man can kill a lion with his hands and a bear when he came to take his sheep, I'm sure he's, let's give him a try. And I was just reading the David and some of the things he did. I'm making my message and I said, I think I love David. And God said he's the man after his heart. You know, if there was one thing about David I loved, one of his virtues was he had this confidence in himself. There was nothing like fear found in David. Nothing. A lot of Christians, I'm just saying, if the lion comes to the house, you know, because these things are like to what goes on today. So many things are happening in the life of Christians. And you see a Christian thanking God, oh, I thank God I did not even take this thing. But it took something from you. Ah, thank God though, this is what it took. Thank God I can do without what the lion took. Because there are so many lions in human forms today. David said, you will not take a pin, not a pin from me. Just over the sheep. Sincerely, so many of us are like, ah, thank God the lion did not even kill me. She ate sheep he came to take. But David said, you will not take even my sheep and go with him. He had to recover everything. If you read David, you know that nobody, if you take, he will recover. How many times do we recover even the smallest of things that the enemy has taken from us? How many times do we let it go and still give testimony and thank God? It is my car that got damaged and did not die. Was your car supposed to get damaged in the first place? You were a child of God. You were a tighter. You were a believer of God. Something has been taken. Whether you like it or not, you have to spend money to fix the car. Your insurance will go high. How many times do we neglect even the little things in ourselves? Some people tell you, ah, thank God though, this person was cancer. My own at this is BP. Are you supposed to have BP? The devil has altered something. Your sister saying, ah, thank God at least it's this one. David was a man with so much confidence. And that is one virtue I want us to emulate today. And the Bible said, okay. So I said, okay, go ahead. Dress him up. If he said he can bring down the giant, dress him up. They dressed David in the whole armor and attire for the war. But again, David did something that actually shocked me. David saw the whole thing he was dressed in and he told himself and said, I am not used to this. I am not used to whatever you have given to me. This is what I'm used to. Even though the armor were good, those are the kind of armor to bring down a person like Goliath. But he understood he was not used to it. How many times do we accept things that we are not used to? We're talking about season of change and delays. These are key things we have to look into. There are so many people, the reason why your life is delayed is because you're operating on something you are not used to or you were not supposed to operate on. They give you every gift, you accept it. Something happened, I think, a month ago or two months ago. I ordered some phones. Um, I think I ordered an iPhone 14 Pro Max for my mom. And when the, I got that for myself and for her. So I said, okay, we'll be using Samsung. Let's use, let me try an iPhone for the first time. And when the phone came, I gave her, I thought she was going to be happy. Oh, this is, you know, an upgrade from her Samsung phone. When the phone came, she looked, looked at the phone. She tried to press here. She does not went, know where to call, know when to send message and everything. She just kept the phone. So I came back, I was like, uh-uh, mommy, why are you not using your phone? Her SIM card was there. I only put her SIM card, transfer the line, but she still kept the phone in one place. I called, she was not picking. I said, mommy, why are you not picking your call? Why are you? He said, 
I don't understand the phone. I don't want them. I bet just return up to the boy buy a phone. I said, ah, mommy, you don't like iPhone 14 Pro Max. They say, not with the name they told me. Oh, it's not about the kind of phone. It's about what me I can conveniently use. You see this one? I don't want them. Return them. That was David. You don't have to accept and use everything. I said, okay, I collected the phone. Had to order another one, you know, Samsung 12, X23 Ultra. So, okay, mommy, I think I use this one. It resembles your phone. Is there a hand? So let us sometimes have this virtue of saying, we are not used to certain things. Because when you accept certain things you are not supposed to accept, it can also delay your seasons. Sometimes you are not supposed to be in a particular location or job. But because your friends are doing it, you jumped in. But I don't know if you're learning from what I'm saying. So please, as children of God, be prepared in the house. David manifested victory because what? He was prepared. And when the armor was given to him, he rejected it and said, Don't give me a sling. This is what I have used to kill all the animals. It doesn't matter how small you feel it is. It is what I am comfortable with. David took what he was comfortable with. And he killed Goliath. Hallelujah. How many of you understand that God, David killed Goliath? By what? The anointing upon his life and by the name of Jesus. But it was also by his what? Preparations. That is what I'm trying to tell us here in the house. It wasn't just by in the name of Jesus. Yes, in the name of Jesus. But within the years he has prepared. And he was so used to what he did. If he had gone with the armor that the king gave him, he would have probably failed. Hallelujah. So be prepared in the house today. I think with time we're going to continue the message next time that I have the opportunity to be here. The next point we're going to talk about this morning is what? Tear down unprofitable structures. If you have to change your seasons and you're expecting a season of change, you're tired of where you are. You have to, what the Bible said, tear down. If you want to use the word breakdown, unprofitable structures. Ecclesiastes 3 verses 3 says what? A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to tear down and a time to build up. You know, before then, let us also go to where it says a time to kill and a time to heal. We see what is happening in Israel today. People are being killed. I'm just saying it because of there are some Christians that are so Christian that believe that thou shalt not kill. Yes, it is true. Thou shall not kill what cannot kill you, and not what and what cannot harm you. Not what can kill you or what can harm you. You know, in America today, if a person invades your house with a gun and a knife. And you are able to pull out your gun or kill them first. You're not going to any jail. Hallelujah. You're not. As children of God, we should be smart. Read the Bible with understanding. A time to what? To kill and a time to heal. Certain times, certain things has to die in the life of man for healing to start. It could be certain relationship that has to die. It could be certain people that I'm trying to kill you that have to actually die before you. Because don't even play with certain things. If you say, oh, I cannot pray certain prayers and say let certain people go down. If somebody succeeds in killing you and you're not prepared, you go to hell. It doesn't matter if you were killed unjustly. And that person that kills you can repent tomorrow and go to heaven. Who cheated who? So when you want to pray as a child of God, pray all manners of prayers. America keeps you the ground to take out somebody they try to take you out. And you know there's one thing with the system here that for somebody like me, the Bible says they slap you here, walk out. But for those who will be listening to me or for those who would want to retaliate, the Bible, we're talking about the Bible, we're talking about the laws too in America. The law says if you, no matter what somebody is saying, somebody is insulting you, no matter how deep the insult is, you don't have the right to touch the person. It's only insult. The only thing is you can reply if you have to. 
Or in your heart, just tell yourself that I want to beat this person today, but let them blow me first. That's the only grounds you have to beat to hit back. You cannot hit back actually. But when the person keeps doing it and the person gives you a fist, then you can give the person several fists as you want and fight for your freedom at that time. And the law does not judge you by how many fists you give the person. As long as they come and ask who blew, who gave the other person the first fist or blew and they said it's the other person, you are justified, you will go your way. But don't do it in Nigeria though, because Nigeria were evaluated by somebody give me small blow, you give them 10. That's how Nigeria system works. So like this small blow where they give you, now you beat them like this. But here, doesn't matter. Hallelujah. The Bible also says what well, attempt to pull down unprofitable structures. As we we're saying before, structures are like principalities that govern humans. And the Bible does not make a mistake when it says there's a time you have to tear down certain structures. As children of God, even if a structure is unprofitable, the next thing you have to do is what? You bring it down when you tear it down. Because we are governed by the structures. The structures are like principalities. They are mysteries to the citizens. Pull down certain structures if they are unprofitable to you. And these structures can be even the government. That is why you don't always have to be friends with the government. If the government, the government is, is the structure that governs you as a child of God. So whether you pray from today to tomorrow, if there is a fault in the government, you are affected by it. You are affected. Because yes, the church is an institution. The government is an institution that governs everything, even including the church. And that is why to register the church, you have to still go through the government. The Bible says what? Pull down unprofitable structures that are not benefiting you. If you cannot pull down a structure, we locate to another place where you can build a new structure. In order to build a new structure, you must tear down unprofitable structures that affect your destiny. I was telling somebody that the structure in Nigeria, it will take just beyond our prayers. And that is why I think I have a thing with ministers that people are looking, you know, onto to just say, I pray, pray. There are certain actions that should be taken to tear down such structures or to bring a change. Tear down does not mean you have to fight or something. It's contributions you have to make to change the structure. Pray. Yes, prayer is good. But what are you doing? What are you doing to change the structure that you know that is affecting a lot of your members? These days there's so much poverty. What are those structures that need to be pulled down in your life this morning? What are those structures that you know is affecting your seasons this morning? You have to pull them down in the mighty name of Jesus. You have to pull them down in the mighty name of Jesus. You know something happened, I was telling somebody with what happened to the death of that guy, I said, it is just this guy's death that is showing somebody so many, they are showing people now so many things that we all know. We know that in Nigeria presently, the structures there, especially even the music industry, there are some people that assume a position and they lock the gates. Those are the structures we're talking about. They become a principality in that sector that no matter what you do, you cannot break through. That is what is happening today. Even in the government, even in the church, there are so many things going on in the church. Structures are principalities. You see somebody is singing more than the other person, but the person will not blow. Because some structures are said, no matter how good you sing, you will not penetrate this war. Some people get to positions and they make sure nobody ever gets to that same position. Those are structures. And I, I don't know. When I just think about things, I ask myself, are there God? Even the air they breathe. It's God that gives it. It's not just the oxygen. 
God can decide to take any life. So when you now think you are the God over somebody's life, you determine where the person will be elevated. You determine where the person will live and where the person will die. You too, someday you will die. Whether you like it or not, God will determine the day you too, you will die. What are those structures that are affecting us as children of God? Today I want to pray to you that they will fall down for your sake. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. your life what? Pierce through those structures. In the mighty name of Jesus, even the structure in America that says you cannot get beyond a particular level. Everything you do, you work from January to December. By January the next day, you check your account. It has not changed. Those are structures that pattern your income. Those structures will go down for your sake. In the mighty name of Jesus, there is nothing the anointing of God cannot do. All you need to do is speak up when you have to speak up and ensure that you are prepared to actually elevate yourself. But whatever structure is, is, is working against your elevation in this country or even in Nigeria, they shall come down for your sake. In the mighty name of Jesus, they shall come down for your sake. In the mighty name of Jesus. You know, I just want you to, to get up this, this morning and let us just pray. There are some kids who have to talk, who have to walk with the time. Hallelujah. We will be blessed. I want you to be on your feet as we pray this morning. I want you to lift up your voice and begin to ask God that, Lord, every unprofitable structure in my life, every structure that is working against my destiny, I want to hear you pray this morning. Every structure working against my destiny, Every structure that has been enacted by the government, every structure in the industry where I am, either in the nursing industry, in the music industry, whatever industry it is, that is working against my elevation, Lord, pull them down for my sake. Those structures are started to act like a principality over your life. They say without them, there's no way you are moving forward. Structures that affect my life this morning. I want you to pray this morning. Because there is nobody under the sound of my voice that is working without a structure. Structures are things that have been put in place that you should walk by. You cannot walk above it. You can only walk within it. Structures and laws. It is not every law that has been enacted that benefits you as a child of God. And you know this. Lord, approach every structure. Every structure of hatred. I want you to pray this morning like you mean it. I want you to pray this morning like you mean it. In the mighty name of Jesus. You know, as we're praying, the Spirit of the Lord is telling me that there is somebody that spoke to a tree and tied your destiny to it. And they spoke a word to the tree that as this tree is unable to move from here to here, so shall your life not move. How many of you understand that trees don't move? A tree is situated at one place, and no matter what you do, in and out of season, the tree is there. I don't know who has tied your destiny to a tree. And since I use this tree, as you remain here, so shall this person remain in this place. There is no movement. See, the little movement you can see in a tree is at the top. When the wind comes, it can move the top of the tree to and fro. But that does not mean there is movement from its foundation. Real movement is a movement that happens in the foundation. So when you see like, oh, if you're still getting a little thing, okay, the, the wind is moving a little, okay, you're feeling that all oh, things are okay. No, the foundation has not moved from January to December. It is where it is. And you begin 
begin to ask yourself, why has my life not transformed? Why have I been in America and it seems like I'm not going anywhere? Why is everybody moving forward and it seems like I'm on a standstill? Hey Lord Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, I want to speak to you today. I want to speak over your life that from today henceforward you shall begin to move forward in life. In the mighty name of Jesus, you shall not move in cycles. Listen, you will not move in cycles. Cycle means you will go like this, turn round, and you will come back to that point. In this country, in your lifetime, you shall not move in cycles. In the mighty name of Jesus, you shall move forward. In your life, there will be nothing like a better yesterday. Hallelujah. When you're beginning to say my yesterday was better, it means there's a, there's a problem with your presence. You shall not know a better yesterday in the mighty name of Jesus. For every day of your life, you will experience something beautiful, something better than your yesterday. In the mighty name of Jesus, I want to speak to you. I don't know what has been pronounced into your destiny. You know, there are some of us that they have pronounced that nothing good will last in your hands. I don't know who has spoken into your destiny that nothing good will last in your head. Every good thing you have, you lose. Every good thing that comes your way, you lose it. You will not lose good things anymore. In the mighty name of Jesus, the blessings of the Lord in your life shall last. No enemy will trust the blessings. I don't know if you're praying this morning now. Because what we are kind of declaring upon our destiny. We are making a decree of change. We said it is the season of change. We are making a decree of change. Because I am not happy where people are. Whatever has been stopping their destiny. The enemy of man is man. In case you don't understand. For whatever you go through. There will somebody involved. The devil does not do anything. He causes man to do the things that happens to you. And it depends the man that has accepted the plans and the baguette of the enemy. The devil is not a witch. For he engineers people to do things and make pronouncements upon your life. The devil cannot make a pronouncement over your life. He can only do that through man. A man will make a pronouncement. Whatever pronouncement has been made upon your destiny by a bitter fellow. Some of us, the pronouncement has been, you know, was made from an angle of hate, of envy, of jealousy. structures. And some of these structures can be your principality in your life. These structures are not to war. These structures we are talking about, when the Bible said a time to pull down and a time to it was not talking about just walls. Some of these structures are human beings. There is nothing like a war. People make laws. If somebody says they want to bless you, if it's somebody that can call them and say, don't bless this person, that is a principality. I don't know who has made themselves a principality over your life. Today they must go down. In the mighty name of Jesus, I want you to open your mouth and pray this morning. Structures are not walls. Structures are people. People that have said that I will be the one to make you or to unmake you. Structures are people. People who have a 
have built God over your life. People who have told themselves that I am the God over your life. That principality must go down for your sake. In the mighty name of Jesus, whoever has said that I am the God over your life, they will be put to shame today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Open your mouth this morning and say, Lord, stop my enemy before they stop me. Stop my enemies before they stop me. Stop my enemies before they stop me. What the enemy does to a man is they stop him. Something is going on a good pace, they stop it. A child is born, they will open the money. By the age of something, you get something, they stop the growth. You have invested so much, but you've not been able to have it. The Bible said there are seasons. There are times you should plant, and by seasons, there's a time you should reap. How many times have you planted and you have not reaped? What is stopping the reaping? What is stopping you from enjoying your labor that you've invested? Lord, stop the enemies of my destiny. Stop the enemies of my destiny before they stop me, oh Lord. You know, you're going to open your mouth and say, Lord, give me peace by any means. The Bible said, I am the Lord your God, and I shall give you peace by any means. By any means means if somebody has to cross his feet, allow them to cross his feet so that you shall achieve peace. Most times, let me tell you, negotiations fail in order to achieve peace. Sometimes there has to be what? A war. So however God wants to do it, say, Lord, give me peace according to your word by any means. By any means, oh Lord, give me peace this morning. By any means, Jesus, give me peace. Morning, you're going to open your mouth and you say, Oh Lord, I'll put every embargo that has been deposited into my life and destiny. Every embargo, every embargo that has been placed into my life and destiny. Father, I'll put them this morning. Every embargo. Lord that puts it. Take it away, oh Lord. Every embargo, every embargo, oh Lord. Every embargo that has been placed upon my life and destiny. Every embargo that has been placed upon my education. Every embargo that has been placed upon my career. Every embargo that has been placed upon my business. Every embargo placed upon my children. Thank you for what you have done. We thank you for what you continue to do in our lives. Lord, we spoke this morning about the season of change. Now, Lord, may I begin to, to experience a change in my seasons. In the mighty name of Jesus. That change of elevation. That change that brings speed. That change that brings restoration. Change that brings happiness. I am no more dwelling in the season of pace. I am going past that season to the season of celebration today. I am no more in the season of lack. Things are changing to the season of plenty. I am no more in the season of loss. I am now stepping into the season of plenty. I am no more in the season of pace. But I'm now, my seasons is changing for the seasons of joy, of happiness. I am no longer in the season where I have to rent. I am now going to the season where I have to buy my own property. I am no longer in the season where I have to pay a car dollar. I am now in the season where I have to actually buy my car and pay cash. The season is changing for me. 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 No more backwardness. Forward ever. 
back whatever. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.